Hello, and welcome to Herpaderp, a podcast about breaking the stigma on herpes and empowering the community. I'm your host, Erin DeBost. As always, you can review my episodes on YouTube or find the link to the channel on the podcast Instagram page at Herpaderp Podcast. Thanks! Hi, Herpaderpers. I know I have been a bit MIA in my social media game and keeping you all informed on what's going on in my life. Well, things are about to get smoother for the rest of the year because I am officially done my master's degree. I finished my program a few days ago and I'm super excited to be done. This degree means a lot to me because I've been busting my ass off for the past year and a half getting my master's in communications from Syracuse University through their new house online program, Go Orange. And not to mention, Herpaderp originated uh, from an idea I had throughout my program. It started out as a social media campaign project, and now here we stand as a podcast. The best thing to do was to get started, and it all happened at the perfect timing and for the right reasons. Without personal experience, how can we live a life without it? Herpaderp has grown on me since the very start from rehearsing over and over again how much I would have to comfortably say herpes on this podcast, it took me a while to think I could even do it and say that much, and that I wouldn't have the stigma or the shame that I was feeling. Yet, here we are now, not afraid to post and not afraid of what other influences could be had upon this podcast, and not to mention that there's other influencers out there who bring the same messages as Herpaderp does, standing as a team and fighting and empowering the community and breaking the stigma. I never would have imagined this community being so big. And one of my goals for 2019 was to land on a network, a podcast network or a network somehow. And yet here we are already there Now we are part of the Hands Party, the Herpes Activist Networking to Dismantle Stigma. Like, wow, the power of people is really amazing, and I can't wait to see where the network grows and how we can continuously raise our voices to be a voice of reason to everyone without fear of judgment. There's going to be more victories to come along the way, and I can't wait to tell you then. And which brings me to into episode 11. I've been really thinking about, you know, the coming of Herpeter, but also the fact that while going to school, it's important to really think about the self-care aspect, right? Like, it's funny, I saw this quote recently that was talking about, like, is it procrastination or is it really self-care during you know, a busy time or a stressful time? Like, are we really taking ourselves um, out of it just to be able to really relax more? Or are we really thinking of it in terms of like, oh, I don't really want to do this, right? It really depends on our perspective and how we want to really go about it. And (laughs) of course, my conclusion was uh, self-care all the way, like being able to take the time to do meditation, to be able to exercise, to be able to have a social life, because life is all about balance and also finding the balance in what you want to do the most too, right? Like not being able to be forced into situations or to hang out, but it's because you want to be there. And so, you know, looking into more like self-care and what I could do for myself, and of course, you know, during, like, the finals and, like, the rush of it all, I was starting to get more pimples. I was starting to break out. I wasn't necessarily starting to get herpes symptoms, but I try to be more aware of that, especially in the winter time because my skin gets really dry and I know I get really break out around my mouth. And especially being in a place that is so cold and dry area in the winter, I've lately been doing some research on some winter care that can help me with my lips and also remedies for inflammation because not gonna lie, like uh, sugar is and alcohol is not really good for um, 
having herpes because it's just like really the acidic and like the properties of like the alcohol sugar which is the addicting part of sugar and chocolate and other candies uh really brings it out like it's this adrenaline rush of sugar and your body doesn't know what to do with it or where to put it so it's a lot to you know take in like for (laughs) the face and like how your body's feeling because we could have this energy one moment and then it could crash like especially since I'm on the keto diet whenever I'm off and don't have like the right or like the good type of sugar for me I get those types of rushes so I know like I definitely have to calm down on the sweets and it sucks because I have such a sweet tooth. And so I just wanted to take this episode as a time to really talk about winter self-care, like to really take care of ourselves, like our body in terms of, you know, mentally and physically being aware of it. And I wanted to mention, uh, well, both, like taking the time for yourself in the self-care, but also the taking time, like, for your body and to really understand, like, your symptoms that you have. And lately, so I'm going to go through the physical first. Uh, lately, I've been experiencing uh, seriously dry and chapped whips, lips this winter. And normally, I get away with just using lip balm, like Burt's Bees or Chapstick, but this season, nothing seems to be working. Like, I don't know if it's a fluctuation in weather, if it keeps going from warm to cold, something's going on. Even though I do have general herpes, I still try and protect my mouth in the colder months in case any symptoms do dry up my face or if my herpes has evolved uh, into oral. And my lips feel rough and dry, and so I'm just over it. (laughs) Like, I know I needed more remedies to cure myself. And I've been trying uh, one lip scrub. It's the Burt's Bees, uh, is it the face cream, too, and I use Estee Lauder. And in some ways, like, it's helping, but not too much. So, I just hate feeling like that and I just kind of want to see what's next and how to avoid like a cold sore as well and one thing I'm going to share well first in case you're in the same boat as me here are some seven at home remedies that I have been trying and this one uh, I find really interesting because I think I'm going to start it tomorrow just in case I may know if it is a cold sore or not, is when it's at, like, when your cold sore is at the beginning, um, of the first stage, like, when you're getting, like, that tingling, itching, burning feeling beneath the skin of your lips, like, I hate that feeling because you don't know, like, what's coming next or if it's gonna, um, come out that much more. So, to avoid a cold sore from the start, right, as you start to feel it, you could place garlic on... The lip or the area that's becoming a cold sore that's slowly forming. Make sure that the side that um, is cut is touching your lips. So, like, it's literally touching, you know, the garlic juices, if you will, are touching your lips. And you want to let it rub, like, the infected area. Like, you can use it for about 10 to 15 seconds and then let it dry. Let it air dry. So, it really exfoliates it. So, I've heard about this remedy. It's something I'm definitely going to try out. Um, Another one too is using uh, raw honey and raw honey does have amazing benefits and if you apply pure honey on your lips uh, several times a day, uh, you know, honey is a, how can you say it, like uh, it it attracts and it really retains moisture so really kind of keep like that crystallized like you know soft feeling so it really helps with dry lips as well another good one is uh coconut oil it's a natural moisturizer so again similar to the honey just apply it on your lips several times a day and it could really go a long way for you another natural remedy is cucumber slices cucumbers are part Primarily composed of water, so of course this is the perfect solution for your dry lips. 
If you apply cucumber juice or slices on your lips, uh, you'll be able to gain any moisture that you had lost. Uh, and then also, another one is sugar. So again, be aware of this. Maybe use sugar and honey for this, so that way it gently exfoliates your lips to remove any dead skin cells, and this will leave your lips feeling super soft too. So don't eat it, don't lick it off, but just use it to exfoliate your skin. Another good one is to use rose petals to soften your cracked lips. Make a rose petal paste by washing petals thoroughly through water and soaking them in a little milk, and mashing them into a thick type of paste. And when you apply the paste to your lips, uh, do it before you go to sleep so that way you'll be able to uh, soak in overnight. And another one too, and the last one I have is the aloe vera gel. Obviously aloe uh, gel is great for dry skin because it helps with sunburns and keeping your skin cool. It doesn't only restore moisture but it will ease any pain associated with the dry and cracked lips and I hate that so much whenever it breaks out. That's one of like the worst feelings or if you want to pick it off, oh, I do that so often and I need to not do that anymore. <laughs> but yeah, if you just apply like the aloe vera right to your lips, it will be able to smooth that out too. Another uh, great one too that I kind of like is also doing um, airborne, well <laughs> not airborne, what am I trying to say? Um, aquaphor. That's another good one I like to use. It really helps me with skiing, like to prevent like from the wind, really touching it. And also I use it for tattoos. So um, it's a win-win and I always have that on me too. But I'm always all for the natural remedies. Uh, just because, you know, your body's more so used to it and it's just more gentle on the skin. Which brings me also into other things that are more gentle on the skin is essential oils and essential oils that can help treat herpes will help calm down the symptoms include clove oil tree tea oil and myrrh oil tree tea oil is one of the most common oils used for skin that's natural antiviral and also antibacterial properties um, simply apply these essential oils daily, um, usually around three times a day to the areas where cold sores are present. And being careful to use a small amount. Only use like about three drops or so, especially since it's a very sensitive area. And if you have uh, specifically more sensitive skin, try mixing essential oils with a carrier oil to dilute uh, the strength a little bit. For example, using coconut oil to really... Uh, be more gentle and to be able to rub it in a little bit more so uh, essential oils definitely is a cure too I use lavender every night to help me sleep so being able to use these oils too if I know like I'm stressed out and like peppermint oil is also really good too to help me with headaches and I also have this types of focus balm I'll have to really see what it's in but eucalyptus and rosemary are a really great combination too in case you're feeling that kind of sickness feeling that's really clogged up in your um, respiratory system and hard to breathe. So yeah, essential oils are definitely uh, the ways to go. And since I had told um, a few remedies, there's also a few things that can also help with irritation and pain too. So, ways to really improve, like, the healing, but also, like, to lower the pain of it, too, in case you're in more of, like, the outbreak type of phase. So, here are some tips as well for you, just as little reminders, that do not touch any of the open sores during an outbreak or uh, beforehand. So, be really gentle with yourself and to wash your hands really frequently and each time that you do touch them so that way it doesn't uh, spread as easily. And then also don't kiss someone if you have an open sore or share drinks and utensils. Uh, 
Avoid sharing a toothbrush, lip balm, or makeup with others to lower the risk of transmission. And once a sore is healed, consider getting a new toothbrush since it's possibly, uh, you know, has like reminiscences that can re remain on your brush for a period of time. And to decrease irritation, only use natural mild soap and warm water on sores. Don't pick, attempt to pop rubs or like the rub sore so I know that's one thing that's hard for me to do and I try not to do that but it's definitely very important so you don't share or spread transmission on that and oh and interesting how this comes up again is don't apply store-bought anti-itch cream so that means like cortisone uh vaseline like or other products that can worsen swelling. Use the essential oils instead that can help. Well, again, those are the clove, the tree tea oil, and myrrh oils to help uh, with that. And if sore causes, if the sore causes pain, try applying a pressure with a warm towel against the affected area to decrease the pain, or to sit in a warm bath or shower to let the heat uh, reach the area where it hurts too. So really, uh, I've been, you know, just sitting in the shower and just really being able to take it in because when you sit in the hot shower it just kind of like lets your pores like exfoliate and x out and like get those toxins out of there of what you've had so just really being able to take care of your face and also to be careful to use a separate towel um on your genitals or near any open sores that are use your mouth you can transmit the virus from one location of your body to another but it limits the likelihood so again even though I have genital herpes it's also very important to take care of other areas of the body too in case like there's transmission and you know always wash your hands like never forget to wash your hands cover your mouth when you're sneezing that's one of my biggest pet peeves is to spread germs like you know, we're all trying to stay happy and healthy this holiday season, and we want to continue to spread that good word, so we, <laughs> and good health, too, and we want to be merry and bright through it all, right? <laughs> and, you know, like, this episode, episode 11, I just really wanted to take the time to uh, mention those health tips in the holiday season as we begin uh, this holy week, which reminds me, I had talked about the physical components of staying, you know, healthy during the holiday season, but also like the mental part as well. Like again, really taking the self-care for yourself. Like we are in a season that's always so caring and so loving of others that you know, we always put others before ourselves and during these seasons. And sometimes when you recognize a point that you're going through, like, take care of yourself, too. Like, take a few moments, like, to, you know, go shopping by yourself. But, you know, you can still for other people. But time to be alone, too. That's completely okay. And to really reset yourself. I find meditation is really helpful. Exercise. And also just being, like, in the moment with yourself, too. Like, go sit and enjoy a Christmas or holiday movie and, you know, just have that evening to really be, to relax and to just see it through. It really helps for me to breathe. Like, especially meditation has become a big practice of me and the art of letting go of you know old things and you know toxins like live in us yes like there are like oils and such that like we eat bad food for us but there's also the mental toxins too of regret and you know limitations that we put on ourselves and thinking that we can't do this like negative talk and you know looking on self-worth like we are in the space of gratitude and to be in good cheer because we need to keep that cheer 
going, cheering on for ourselves, cheering on for being there for our family, to be there for our friends, to be the love and the light that we really are. And we should all cherish that. And that is also a natural remedy too, is, you know, we all hear mind over matter, but we must take care of our minds because that's how we think and that's how we say. And by that, I give you the tips of mental and physical health this holiday season. And, you know, I'm, as I mentioned before, I'm always looking for natural remedies and as well that help with inflammation too. In future upcoming episodes, I'm going to be talking about the keto diet and how that has really helped me too and my journey uh, with that. I hope to have my trainer as a guest as well, uh, Katie Boyd, to be able to really talk and speak about that. And I would love to hear from you some of your winter care tips too. Feel free to comment on the episode below or on Instagram, on the podcast post, or feel free to email me at herpdirtpodcast at gmail.com. And as we enter Christmas week and, you know, a time for family and friends, really take that time for yourself. Take care of yourself and stay happy and healthy this holiday season. I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.